one and all for your support of the Irish Power Hour and uh, the arts. And we really appreciate all your support. Couldn't do it without the likes of Marty Cahill. All right, the, the only request from the band is no math questions. <laughs> nah, <I think> <laughs> what about science questions? <laughs> All right, so let's start it off. Who's We're, going? Not, a, we're not a spot of sixth grader. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to introduce yourselves and let everybody know who you are? Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's Joe, he's always late. Max and I have been here for four hours. <laughs> She's got us memorized here. I know. Would you like to introduce us? Okay. I don't know what I want. Come on, <laughs> Sophia, get together. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nor? T. Yeah. Ian. And I don't know what I want else. Okay. <laughs> well this is Tommy, and this is Joe, and this is Brent. I knew something was And that's Brent. Oh. Who's dancers? Which who, who, who Raise your hands. Which ones have you danced? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> are you, you Irish Irish dance? Yeah. And you're an all teacher, yeah. so that's you know, pretty good. Yeah. Are you guys gonna dance? Yes. They're gonna dance with me. What's your name? Hannah. I did already. What's your name? Fiona. Fiona. What's your name? Fiona. Fiona. Nice. And you know my name. I just like to Cool. Oh, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. 
we, we last night we did that Adelaide and Patty song, you know, where we envisioned the whole crowd, you know, doing it with their arms around each other doing this, and it's sure like, hey, it works. <laughs> it works. Yeah, so. It did. It's never hasn't been out that long. So no. Some people weren't paying attention, you know. We just got to do it now. Yeah, it was natural. People haven't really, a lot of people haven't been exposed to the song a lot. No. Yeah. Question for you. Uh, just on the topic of finding bandmates and so forth, uh, who, since I don't know you guys that well, who's the newest, or you guys come together as a group and one shot and found each other, or how'd you guys come together? Yeah. The history. Yeah, yeah Norm was caught. Norm, Norm and Brent were living in Los Angeles, and then they came back to Kansas City, and they, you go ahead, Norm, and say, how did that bloody hell did we get into it? We're sitting around the pool. Yeah. In Houston. In Houston. In Houston. That's uh, not awesome. Oh, we, yeah, uh, it's new. I mean, Joe's been about six years. Six, I'm so he's right. the newest guy. Wow. Six years is the young guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, still so the, he still has to carry the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. I just saw him downstairs in the suitcase. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think this year was, uh, it was right about this time when we started 14 years. It's a fourth year. We're going to do that. Rehearsing. Yeah, we started. We rehearsed for about six months before we ever played it for people. Uh, you know, there's a lot of left turns and stuff that have to be worked out in this type of music. And we started out doing a lot of uh, pogues and saw doctors. Our, our, you yeah, should see our original mm -hmm. set list, you know. It was kind of water boys. Who said first gig? Like, where was your very first gig? Can you remember? It was in Howard. It was in the, at the Hurricane in Kansas City. Nice. Westport in West Westport. 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 With just the three of us and three other guys it was uh, kind of bluegrassy. There was a Celtic tinge to it, but it was as much bluegrass as anything. And we're kind of coming full circle now with the, some of these songs have that little bit of bluegrass texture. So. Quick question. It's, it's kind of geared toward Brent the whole band. How much, I know when I played with Sean and Crosby Giants, I did a lot of anthropping, like it shows. Oh, is that your group, oh. Crosby Giants? Yeah. That's a great thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I take no credit whatsoever. I think I take no credit whatsoever. That was yours. Yeah. 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 Um, how much of that goes on when you guys perform live? I know you guys play a lot of live, you're awesome, but like, how much, uh, how much of that happens, particularly to Phil, since I, it's my, Thing, but like what was the first part of that? Oh, just it's all just one part. Like, just how much improv goes into your um, live performances, like as opposed to like do you I'm probably probably write out the album for the most It's a pretty structured, yeah. pretty structured. Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, it's the music is, is so intricate. And it's too intricate to stop going on. Um, exactly. So that's at, least, at least the rhythm parts of this form of the song. I mean, there are there are solo sections. I get a lot of freedom. Yeah, we we get we get the black right. sheet. Right. Improv is, a, is another level of all that small. More fun stuff. You've got to be really good at improv in this kind of stuff. Yeah. Within well, the structure, we get to play around the most. Right. I'm going to try. We're, we're actually. Uh, it's like that's a good question because we are working on on um, you know little intros and outros and maybe uh, in the record it's got like a 16 bar. Solo, maybe we're going to work on it, maybe yeah. 32 or 60, you know, maybe kind of milk the middle of something, make it for the live shows, because I think a live audience really likes that. They really enjoy that. And some of the songs we might do a longer outro, or maybe we put a drum solo. So there is a little bit of improv in it, but it's, it's all still very structured and rehearsed. It's not just, we don't just say, hey, let's, let's right. put, you know. Not a jazz kid. Follow me, come to the know. Or a militia of blues, blues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. How much time have, well, do you have so much time to play? How long have we been together? <laughs> How old are you? About 30 minutes. Seven and a half. Almost twice.
twice as long as you've been alive. <laughs> That's just us so together. <laughs> <laughs> How about right now on that question? How did you guys start playing music? I mean, what instruments did you start with? Uh, How did that progress? Uh, and particularly, I've seen you on the, on the accordion show. That, is that relatively new? That's new to me. Uh, oh, okay. I, I avoided it like the plague. <laughs> we, we kind of pushed that on. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it. I've got a lot to learn. Of, you know. It's okay. Cynthia and me get cool, so you're <laughs> <laughs> They don't have a red accordion. That's the perfect point. Have you tried the concertina? No, no I, I don't know about buttons. I'm a, I'm a saxophone player mainly, so i got enough buttons. Yeah. I don't know if I can do that in one lifetime, so I'll say. He's a jazz guy. Started out with a glass of beer. <laughs> and then everything got sticky. And then it yeah. got sticky. Yeah, sticky. That's sticky. Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who started it? How did that? I don't know. I, 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 I you did? Yeah. Because, uh, were you just messing It's been like a Blue Man group thing. I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you made that popular. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I'd like to start using like little silicone balls or something because all the water gets everywhere. <laughs> Steve uses that powder stuff, what's that called? Oh, talcum powder. Talcum powder for, it's not awful. He uses it for his fingers, for yeah. the guitar. Yeah. And sometimes he put that on there, and then he start getting the place. That's, <laughs> that's also a bad idea. Because when the light hits it from the audience, it's like magical. When the lights, cut, when the lights catch it. Yes. Yeah. It's, become very, it's become very part of our show. Right? Tradition. Very much that. I'm thinking of scuba suit. <laughs> you know, but how we, how it, how it is, how does one become a musician? I, I always wanted to be a drum for as long as I can remember. And I remember when I was a young fella and in Arco and I joined the pipe band to learn to play the drums. And they said, we've got enough drummers, we need some pipes. <laughs> so I learned to play the bagpipes, you know, and then, uh, and then progressing and the drums just happened. And, uh, and I joined these lads, and, and I'm a drummer, I'm a really singer. <laughs> when, we, when we got in yeah. the band, one of the things that, <laughs> that we found out was, oh, and, and he plays bagpipe. We didn't know, we weren't sure what to do with you when we got <laughs> and, 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 and it didn't dawn on us that it might be a good idea to have an Irish guy. I mean, it sort of did. <laughs> but, and especially once we met him. Uh, at the time we did it was a little before Tommy and we, our other drummer was leaving and we, Ian's a drummer and, uh, and had some, uh, we saw him sing playing drums somewhere in the bar. And, uh, playing eagle songs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was anxious to hear him play the bagpipes because that, that was one of his deals he's played. Oh, cool, he plays bagpipes. I've never even seen his bagpipes. We still have bagpipes. If he has bagpipes, I'm not sure. I'm I can't. My pipe should be hidden in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen it. We probably have bagpipes. I've never seen it. Well. I heard them this morning. Yeah. Somebody was in here playing. Has anybody yeah. ever noticed that those guys yeah. warm up for two hours for two minutes worth of performance? <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, that <laughs> hey, soft or something? No, that's not going to be good. Um, I, being around a musician all the, all the time, I, I know that part, part of what you do is music. That's probably the best part of what you do. But there's, to be a band, there's a lot more involved of the business aspect and so forth. Who does that for you? Do you do it yourselves, or do you have somebody that helps you with it? Or you're talking about the business end of things? Yeah, I'm just I mean, booking. I think we were ta we were talking about booking yeah. flights and stuff. And some of us, some of it was. We all yeah. kind of take different. We all wear different hats with regard to the running of the business. I mean, we, you, you've seen us talk, you've seen us play, but there's a whole bunch of other things to run. Right. It's a business. It's a corporation. You know. Um, we have the, we have our band, which is a company. We have a publishing company for our music. We have a merchandising company and we have a record company. It's all company. It's all Taiwan's corporation. And then uh, yeah, I run the business end for books and everything. And Norm does the merchandise and Steve does the booking. And, uh, and we all do this, this all 
bunch of different hats to wear. And we all can look back. What percentage of your time is like playing, practicing, gigs, and then business? Never enough for practice. Yeah. Right? Never. Uh, <laughs> it's about 50-50. Is it? Yeah. So I was. I would have been expecting yeah. maybe more. So it's. Yeah. We try to practice on Tuesday evenings. That's kind of a boys' club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Steve cut. Steve is kind of the full time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Full time. Yeah, so yeah. More than 50-50. Yeah. 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 Yeah was we were so reliant on, on all the big boys that wanted their 20% cuts, you know, like all the record companies, all the publishing companies, all the managers, all the record, all these, all these people. Come on, boys, I'll make you start. Whereas now with social networking and with technology, with the recording industry, and, uh, and then getting your name out there with Facebook, with friends, with networking between friends, and the social media, you can be, you can actually now be an indie band and be successful and really market yourself through your fan base mm -hmm. and uh, not have to rely on on all these big executives. You know, twenty percent goes only only goes so many ways. You know? <laughs> I love bands back in the eighties and nineties that were very massive, big, successful hits. I know sitting at home wondering how they're going to pay all their money back to these executives. Yeah. And, uh, they just sold their souls to the devil, God them. You know, we're, we're, we own all our music, we completely own our music. And I would advise all you kids that you, you, you decide to say, okay, I want to be a professional musician. You know, learn your craft, learn your instrument, learn your, your, your presence, learn your, you know, your dynamic on stage, learn the business end of it, learn about publishing, learn about how to own your music, how to protect your music, and uh, learn recording, how you can record yourself. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I've opened up, you know, because I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself a musician. I think I'm an entertainer, you know. <laughs> I don't know how to play anything, actually, but I can do a little bit of everything to get by. But now I've got this Apple computer, and it's got GarageBand on there. I'm flipping Strakowski, I'm great. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just, 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 yeah, be a lot more uh, you know, productive and creative you know, with the technology that's out there in comparison to what we have to deal with. Oh yeah, it's so immediate. It's yeah. So, yeah. Especially with the garage band thing, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, I get yeah. here, yeah. I had a computer, everybody could hear it minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it wasn't even that long ago, going to our warehouse and uh, stuffing FedEx envelopes with VCR tapes in the van, you know, so that we could send it out to a promoter somewhere. Two weeks later, they still haven't listened to it. You know? What's a VCR? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that was so expensive as well. Yeah. Every time you send one out, you're spending $25. Now you can just yeah. send an email to the whole album on it. Yeah. 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 You know, click here. Send it to YouTube or whatever. How much music yeah. do you saw on my iPad? Did you do anything through uh, iTunes? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the tools that you have. Yeah. Facebook and um, Reverb Nation, Bandcamp, all this kind of stuff. You can be the record company and sell your stuff, which is that's what you want to get to, is to the point where you're not working so hard, you know, going around the country working and letting your assets make money for you. Yes, so, yeah, right, they're doing the work. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're set up to where we have this system where people can. They can find our music easy, they can watch us or listen to us easy. So, yeah, the technology is and that's a come along the right time. Full time job for somebody, you know. It, it's, there's no end to it. The network thing via the internet. Or the you know, master of the network. Can I see one question? What? Um, no, I don't know. I had one last question, just on where you're at before we go away. Um, you're talking about the VCR, stuffing VCRs and envelopes and saying about... And a FedEx box. Yeah, exactly. How, what, how pushy is too pushy when you're trying to get your stuff out there? Is there a point where you can be too pushy or do you just I think hope for the best? Uh, it yeah. depends on the, the uh, promoter, you know, or the, whoever you're trying to talk to. You have to 
build yeah. the core. But you do need to be persistent, though. You know, that's you, that's a must. So they have I, a lot of they have a lot of material that comes in. You got to sympathize, like for DJs and people like that. They get a stack of stuff every week. But you would never recommend not sending someone something to someone. Just send it out. And just yeah. got to. Mm -hmm. It may end up in the hands of somebody else that can help you. It may bounce off of somebody and go to somebody Let's else. Let's face it, there's a lot of love in this business, you know? Yeah, that's, I guess that's what we're going at. I mean, every day you're in your, every day you turn on, you know, the top 30, you're like, how the heck they do? Right. You know, and, and then you, you, know, you just saw some band last night. You went Nobody's heard of, yeah, you're right. So that, that's always the way. There's a lot of people out there trying to sell their music. And, and I just think that if, if you start thinking you want to be a musician so that you can get in the top 30, then you probably can you know, quit. But, you know, <laughs> right now, you can say, if we were, if Marty didn't know us and we wanted to come play the Syracuse Irish Festival, we have, the, we could hit him one time with songs, videos, all electronic, pictures, you know, presentation that looks pretty cool, mm -hmm. and, and then Marty gays or it. You know, it's, you don't have to really bombard them and wonder if they heard your cassette. And he said no in 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, other side, the flip side of that is he can just say spam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially something that says the L. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think one of those things that you did, though, to create your own luck, um, I know every once in a while I'll call Marty and before he has a chance to turn off YouTube before he picks up his phone, yeah. is him up on stage singing Fat Bottom Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> now, and I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. And the first year that you did it, when you invited all the bands to come up, yeah. I mean, it's an opportunity that's cool. Seriously, yeah. we're, we still talk about it. Yeah, Everybody cool. still talks about it. How did it come about? I mean, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I, again, I think it's you creating your own luck. That's what's going to be. We, we've done that with Haggis on, on, on several occasions, yeah. several festivals that we played at, and, and uh, both of them, they're dear friends of ours and they're good pals. And um, uh, we were somewhere and we said, hey, let's play a song together. You know? <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of, and, and that's got to be something, you know, nothing too serious and yeah. tongue in cheek, you know. And, you know, I don't know if you guys go to a lot of Celtic festivals, but uh, the fact that I'm gross and kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity like that, you have to, you know, yeah. play with, it, it just creates goodwill between the bands. Yeah, it's good coming around. And the crowd usually loves it. Better than friends. I heard about it. I, I, the first time I heard about it, you did it at the uh, Great American Irish Festival. Yes. No, not that it wasn't probably the first time you did it, but I wasn't even at the festival and people came back uh, talking about it. Yeah. And again, I think that's brilliant because, you know, that's what you want. Well, it, it, it takes the seriousness, seriousness out of it and it allows the audience to kind of participate in this. What the heck are they yeah. going to do now? Yeah. You know? so, yeah. I think that's your special to get you guys out because, I mean, I become an absolute total stupid eater around you guys because of the energy you guys have put off. We just all want to be a buzz, you know? Yeah. We do. You give of yourself so much that we all feel we know you. Yeah. You know? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we love that. And we, yeah, we, 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 feel the, we feel the same way. You know? love to interact yeah. with the people. Oh, we, we always try and stay around yeah. after a show. When we show up in, in here, you know, Central New York has been really, really good. Oh, yeah. They do love you. Don't know why. Are you guys as famous in Kansas? Do they love you as much as Yeah, they like us a lot. Do you never say famous in your own? Got a lot of free no, meals. So, no, <laughs> it's, a lot of free meals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, uh, because we live there, so mm -hmm. how big a deal? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. But so, I mean, we're, we're we've headlined the Kansas City Irish Fest for the since the, and it's, this is a ten year anniversary this year, and uh, that's the biggest night. Uh, that'll be thirty or forty thousand people at our show. You know, for, so. Have you helped other bands get names because you've heard them and they're nobody's any like these guys? Sure, we probably got into the haggis of the Kansas City Irish Fest. Mm -hmm. So we, we got them well known around that Midwest area. We're trying to break into it. Like I was, yeah. And they got us. And they, yeah, yeah. They, they're the ones that we yeah. 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 Right, they put the word in here. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention a few other Germans, too. They got us. Germany. Yeah. yeah. So we help each other out. Yeah. Do you have kids and, are you, and do they have their own dad? We all have. Yeah. 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 
with you. I have three children, uh, three adults. And yeah, we are friends. I, <laughs> and and uh, yeah. I have yeah. four grandkids. No. <laughs> yeah. But they're not grandkids. <laughs> no, they're not abandoned. Uh, they'll be musicians, I'm sure. But someday they'll be ruined. <laughs> yes, young man. When you found out that you wanted to start a band, how did you find the people to join? Like, That's a good question. Well, we kind of, we kind of all did our own. We're all sort of in our fifties right now, so we played with a lot of bands. I was, I moved to America in 1987, and I played with bands over there. Um, and then I got when I was married over there. Um, I you said, say over there, music. Ireland. No more married in Ireland, but moved over here then, and then get a wife and and, uh, and a little baby, and rock and roll don't really go together so well. So, so gave it up and. Uh, started my woodworking business in Kansas City and we did that and then uh, kids got older and then somehow, somewhere, God says, okay, it's time for you to start playing again. So it just, we just met up with each other again and everybody, could, we've all had our own, we've played with multiple bands, all the lads have played with different bands and, and then somehow we all got together, you know. Would you say this is your favorite band you played in? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Question. Do you, uh, do you have do you have a friend or two couple friends that are interested in being in a band? Um, That's how it starts. Exactly. Yeah. Your buddies, your buddies, how you start. Even if you guys don't play it, yeah. you talk each other into yeah. what to play. We all play instruments. So. Yeah, that's yeah. how that's how it starts. Yeah. You're, you're going to be in a band. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> you know what? That's how every one of us started with one of our best friends. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And we all we all knew each other. Oh, yeah. oh. We played it in different bands together. But we're like oh. the same, you know, yeah. play the same cities. Friends. Yeah. You know. So we all knew each other. We all heard each other play. Friends, yeah. we hung out together. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking forward to you guys opening up for us at the Syracuse Aerosmith. Next year. Tell what you're going to do. Yeah, that's what the idea that we have next. This is our second uh, punk rock music clinic. And our next venture. Um, Cabrina, Marty, and I are putting together a small festival with Glenberry Boys, Enish, and the Cosmic Giant. I saw the flyer. What's that? I saw the flyer. Yeah. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to invite the students to come in and do a Celtic School of Rock for one week, every night for a week leading up to the festival. And then have them put together a couple songs as a group, and then they're going to open the festival for us. Oh, and, then we'll like, and then we'll do it again in September. Yeah! And then, you know, have it grow a little bit more each time <coughs> and have them open up right after the Mass on Saturday. Yeah. Have them open up really the festival yeah. there. I tell you what, let's, let's just for fun have, have, the, have the School of Rock get up with us and play Pat Bottom Girls. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank you.